Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Doing something a little bit different today and I'm cooking with you guys or baking. I have been making these muffins for many years for my son. We are not using any store-bought flour. We're making our own today. No white or brown sugar and also no butter or eggs. So let's get into it. First up, our ingredients. We're gonna need some quick minute oats. No still cut oats for this recipe, y'all. And some, you're gonna need two ripe bananas or overripe in my case. You guys, don't talk about my bananas. I needed to use them and this is the perfect recipe. You're going to need two eggs. Also some honey, doesn't have to be this brand. Any type of honey that you have at home will do. Also some milk, so I am majority plant-based and so I am using almond milk, but you can use whatever type of milk you have at home. Vanilla extract and almond extract. I love using a combination of these two, so aromatic in the kitchen. And of course our staples, our baking powder and baking soda. We're also going to need some salt and cinnamon. And we're also going to need some maple syrup. I really love this brand, but any brand that you have will do. For my mix-ins, I am using coconut. You can use whatever mix-ins you like, but I am using coconut for this particular recipe today. I use pumpkin pie spice in a lot of things, in my oatmeal, in my son's pancakes, and also in this muffin recipe, staple in my household. And now we're going into our kale. Some people are a little iffy about putting vegetables in their muffins. I'll do any and everything. I'm also adding some carrots. And last but not least, I am adding some prunes. Very good for digestion. And it also adds another layer of sweetness. I love this body of trilogy. I have been having my mom send it to me from Texas, although I'm sure I can find it here in California. Chia seed, flax seed, and hemp seed. And now we're gonna move on to our equipment. So we have a whisk and also a spatula. We have a muffin tin container. I don't know what it's called. And also our baking cups. I like using the foil kind. You'll need a mixing bowl. It can be a glass mixing bowl, a plastic mixing bowl. And then I personally love using an electric hand mixer for this recipe. You can use a whisk completely throughout. It is just going to be a little bit more challenging and you'll see why. And you'll also need a blender. I have a Nutribullet that I love. It's compact, it gets the job done for smoothies and for making our own flour, which we're gonna do today. And you're gonna need a sheet pan lined with aluminum foil or parchment paper. So let's get started. First, we are going to line our muffin tin with our baking cups. I like to take the white sheet outside and just use the aluminum foil. I like to do this step in the beginning while the kitchen is still clean and my hands are still clean. It just makes it a lot easier once it's time to fill it up. We can move that to the side. Next, we have our baking sheet lined with aluminum foil. We're gonna add our oats to this pan and flatten it out, smooth it out. These are actually gonna toast at 325 in the oven for about five to 10 minutes. Um, you can't really go wrong with it, but I would err on the side of like five minutes. I like to sprinkle on this pumpkin pie spice. It just really makes my house smell really amazing and it gives the oats a nice zhuzh. So into the oven that goes. Next, we take our mixing bowl and we put our bananas, our ripe and overly ripe banana inside. That's my son. I love having him in the kitchen with me to explore. Here's where our electric hand mixer comes into play. So while you could mix this with the whisk or even use a fork, um, this mixer definitely gets the job done a lot easier. The goal here is you want to reduce the amount of lumps and clumps and chunks that you have. So you just keep working away at it until it looks something like this. Next up, we are adding our two eggs. 
we just add that right into the banana mixture we're actually going to be adding all of our wet ingredients i do plan on trying to do like some flax eggs one time or maybe even opting out and using um like an applesauce or something like that since i am leaning more towards steering away from eggs but i haven't gotten there yet so any tips tricks suggestions for egg replacements definitely let me know what you have tried before but we're adding in all of our wet ingredients our honey our vanilla extract almond extract our maple syrup and we're going to add all of that and blend them up i use my spatula to get every little bit out every bit counts and we're just going to whisk that away At the end, it should look something like this. Now, once all of these ingredients are blended and mixed together, you can move this uh, mixing bowl to the side and we're gonna work on our dry ingredients. Now that our oats are out of the oven and nicely toasted, um, I am going to get them out of this aluminum foil and into, we're gonna put two thirds of this mixture into the Nutribullet cup and we're going to put the remaining one third of this mixture into the, um, just like a glass mixing bowl. I like to just kind of roll it up like a burrito and pour away. I gotta close up the end <laughs> so that it doesn't spill out through the other side. And here we go, we're gonna put, like I said, two thirds into the Nutribullet cup, just like this. It smells so good, you guys. If you haven't been using pumpkin pie spice, I, I highly recommend it. <laughs> so this is what it looks like, nice and toasted. We can move that over to the side. And next we're gonna blend up our oats, but before we do, my Trilogy mixture goes in. I find that when I blend this up versus leaving it whole in the recipe, it helps a little, it's a little bit easier to digest. So uh, just a tip for you guys. And once you are finished blending that up in the Nutribullet, it literally takes seconds. You get a consistency like this. We can move that to the side and start working on our mix-in. So that same container that had the oat flour in it, we are going to add my carrots, my prunes, and also my coconut. If you're doing apples, you can dice up apples yourself or you can chop them up a little bit in like a food processor really it literally takes a couple seconds and it's done you don't want to chop them up so small and fine but you do want them to have a little bit of texture so we add that into the container and you guys really can get creative with your mix-ins you can do uh, apple cinnamon you can do a carrot cake mix um, you can do so many different things blueberries um, there's literally no limits um, I am Cutting up my kale here, I didn't add it to the blender intentionally. I wanted it to be a little bit more chunky, and I know that sounds weird. Um, I guess chunky is not the right word. I wanted it to be a little bit more visible in the muffins. Some kids or people may not want to see their kale if you choose to add it into the recipe. It honestly does not throw off the flavor at all, um, but it gives you a lot of good um, nutrients to the, your dish. So if you're gonna do that, you can blend it in the blender or you can just finely chop it. So now we're mixing wet and dry ingredients, adding everything in just like this. And this is also another area where the electric mixer comes in really handy. So you're just gonna give it a whirl here until it is completely blended. Get around all the edges, any dry batter that you see, try to incorporate that. And once it's done, it will look something like this. So we can move that to the side. And now, literally, we are almost done, you guys. We just have to fill these muffin tins. I typically tend to take a big heaping tablespoon and put a little bit of the mixture into each of the tins first. And then whatever remaining batter I have, I go in and even out each tin to make sure there's an equal amount of batter in each tin so that I have congruency amongst the muffins once they completely bake and come out. And this is what we are working with. That goes into the oven, 350 degrees 
for 20 minutes. And once it's done, ta-da! They smell so good, they look so good, they were able to rise really beautifully. So let's take them out and take a closer look. I absolutely love how these came out. Like I said, I've been using this recipe for many years. Um, it was a way initially for me to hide um, vegetables and fruits um, to, so that my son could increase his consumption of these things. But now he knows what's in them. He helps me to make them. And I've been sharing this recipe with friends and everything and they seem to like it as well. So I like to take it out of the muffin tin so they can start to cool a little bit quicker. 12 beautiful muffins here. Look at that, so beautiful. I actually like seeing the pop of green. It just reminds me that I'm eating something healthy and nutritious and good for me. But I wanna show you guys, this one is not completely cooled off just yet, but I'm gonna open it up for you guys anyway because I wanna show you guys what the inside looks like. Like I said, I like using the foil because it doesn't stick as much. This one is sticking a little bit because it's still warm. It hasn't cooled down, but it looks good on the bottom, nice and cooked through. And once you open it, ta-da! Look at that, that is so pretty. I've used cranberries in these mixtures, raisins. I mean, you can literally go crazy with this. So now, let's see what this tastes like. I'm ready to take a bite. Let's see how these turned out. I like to give y'all live reactions and whenever I'm dancing, it means that I did a good job and it hit the spot, <laughs> thumbs up. Second bite, still good. I think my son is in the background asking for some. <laughs> so I'm gonna share that with him. But thank you guys so much for watching this video.